welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. Uh, this is my podcast to talk about all things uh, crochet and knitting and yarn related, all the good stuff. My name is Ali and I live in Kent in the UK, uh, which is the county that's just south of London, between London and France. <laughs> uh, and I live here with my husband and our two daughters who are 12 and 7. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Starry Eyes Alley. And I think that's it. Oh, and there's a group, there's a group, a Ravelry group for this podcast and it's called Little Drops of Wonderful. So feel free to go along there. Uh, that's where I usually post prompts um, for giveaways and things like that. And there's a chat thread of other interesting things. Um, how are you? It's only been a short while since I published my last episode. And uh, yeah, so it's good to have the time to record again so soon. And it means I can uh, share with you some of the backlog of stuff that I've been wanting to share with you um, when I haven't had so much of a chance to podcast over the past few difficult months. Thank you to all of my uh, lovely subscribers, new and old, for your very kind comments on uh, my episode last time, last week, um, about my dad and for sharing your own experiences with a lot of parents and um, loved ones. And I, I really um, appreciate the time you take to leave comments. And I, I do usually, <laughs> I, well, I hope I reply to every single one. It takes me a little bit of time sometimes, um, but I do I do hopefully get around to replying to them all. Um, okay, let's get straight into it and not start off with rambling. We're going to talk about uh, some finished objects, some works in progress, uh, some incoming stuff, and uh, I'm going to tell you the giveaway winners from the three patterns that we had as giveaways. I ran out of time last time. I actually did uh, draw the winners using random number generator on the last episode, but com uh, completely, I had to cut it out because I just, it was getting too long. So I'm gonna tell you who those winners are. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and see if we can get this under an hour for once. So this is episode 31, today is Thursday the 14th of June. I've already been out this morning. I have dropped my youngest daughter at school and I've been to have my fringe trimmed so that I'd be able to actually see. <laughs> and I've been to the post office to post the uh, prize to Coba in the Netherlands who won the main, uh, the, the FO thread prize for the dodgy bag make along from last time. And the man in the post office told me off, he told me I'd spoke, uh, I'd spelled Netherlands wrong because it was written Nederland, probably that's a horrible pronunciation, which is how they spell it. But he was telling me I was spelling it wrong. I was like, but it's not, it's just not in English. Anyway, that's an aside and I'm rambling already. Let's start off with finished objects. I actually have three finished objects and none of them were worked in progress the last time I spoke to you. They were all a bit last minute. I do have a bit of an issue at the moment. I've got a lot of works in progress and I feel I'm making myself very overwhelmed about them. And I think I just needed some quick projects that I could start and finish to make me feel a bit better. So the first finished object that I have is my soul soothing mitts. I'm just going to take my watch off to put these on. Um, and this is a pattern by uh, Sandra, who is a cherry heart. So Sandra um, Cherry, no, see so Sandra Cherry HRT on Instagram. And she's got the Cherry Heart blo um, uh, podcast, can't speak. The Cherry Heart podcast, crochet mainly, uh, podcast here on YouTube. And she's absolutely lovely. I love Sandra's patterns. Um, I've made quite a few of her patterns before and I had this pattern because I think when she initially released it she did it as a freebie and uh, I've had it for ages and I wanted to make it and then she started at the Cherry Heart make along so you can make any of her free or paid for patterns and enter it into the uh, the, the threads uh, to in order to maybe win a prize. So I was like I'm gonna do that. So I made the soul soothing mitts and I did adapt it slightly uh, because these are 
um, baggy mitts, uh, and they're supposed to sit, they, they don't have a thumb hole, so they're just like um, warm up your arms and your wrists, and they're supposed to sit slightly like that. But I did make them slightly smaller than the pattern because I have got freakishly small hands <laughs> and wrists, so if I made them the size of the pattern, they would have just slid down my arms, and I wanted them to stay hooked, which they will, and they are so comfortable to wear. I love having this kind of like all my fingers are completely free but if I wanted to I could just pull them up and over and they'd be all nice and snug and they're easy to get. Oh I just love them. You could wear them in the office as well and still be able to type because I work in a museum and uh, it's a very old building. My office has got massive floor to ceiling almost um, sash windows which are the original windows and they're very drafty and it can get quite chilly in the winter so these are going to be perfect and the yarn I've had in my stash forever um, it's called the colorway is called uh, forest floor and uh, for, for this pattern you actually hold four ply double or you can use a DK weight but I held this double and I used every last teensy little bit. <laughs> in fact I think I had to omit one row in order to be able to get both the mitts out of the full skein and it is a uh, cut. I'm so hot. It's really windy today um, so I've closed the door because otherwise you're just going to hear the wind whistling through but it is quite muggy and warm. Um, yeah so the yarn is Rhapsody Yarns. She's a UK dyer and the colourways Autumn Forest and uh, it's a 7525. There you go, so I'm really glad to have used that and got that out of my stash and into something I can now use and love and I think I'm going to make another pair of these and I might make some as gifts obviously in the actual pattern size because now everybody has freakishly small arms. So I'm really happy with those and those are my entry into the Cherry Heart Make Along. And the other finished object that I've got, one of the other ones, is um, a pattern. So I subscribe to Simply Crochet Magazine, uh, or rather my uh, mother-in-law um, bought me a subscription for my birthday or Christmas or something. And this, uh, this is uh, this month's uh, edition. Which is a really, really good, I mean, it can be a bit hit and miss with crochet and crafty magazines. Sometimes it can be a bit much, much the same-ish and I'm not always that inspired. But this issue is really good. There's a lot of stuff in here that I really, really wanted to make. And uh, the articles were really, really interesting. And I really, really like this top. Isn't that nice? And I think you work it because it's obviously it's a motif. motif um, uh, all connected but you connect them as you go so I think I could I might have a go at making that it'll be look nice over a little brightly colored vest or something but there was also a pattern for a teensy tiny little mermaid by Ilaria Kaliri and this is the little teensy mermaid and the wool or the you know it's just like an, a, a very splitty <laughs> acrylic yarn and all the little bits and bobs like the sequins for her um, hair and the shells and things. It all came with the, the, the magazine and my little girl Phoebe who's seven saw it and she was like she had to have that, uh, just pop that on the floor, she had to have it. So I made it and it took me maybe I don't know an hour and a half because it's so teeny and cute. The longest thing I think was the hair because you have well, I'll show you, and the sewing on the sequins. So here she is. Here's my little mermaid. Just get a, a flick of hair out of her eyes. There's her eyes. There's a little... I love her shell, her modesty shells. She's so cute. And that's what her hair looks like at the back. So you can see why that took a bit of time. You have to kind of chain and then work into the chains. And then sewing on the sequins, that was a bit beyond me. I just made made up a very convoluted way of doing that. <laughs> Yay! And I had to adjust the belt as well because it came, when I used the pattern, um, it came out way, way, way too long. So I just made it a bit shorter. So that's our little mermaid, who I just had to go and retrieve 
from Phoebe's bed. <laughs> she absolutely loves that. And now I need to make another one because my eldest daughter also wants one. And I think I've got enough like cotton yarn upstairs that I could probably whip one up. But I'm going to need to find little sequin shells from somewhere. So that, because you can't have a shellless mermaid. Goodness me, the very thought. So that's my second uh, finished object. And my next finished object was actually a whip, but I don't think I've talked about it because it's just been something I've had going on in the background. And I have made these before, um, although they're always slightly different because I always just do what I feel. So this is my latest, uh, what I call, what I like to call, <laughs> Hannah bag. So this is a, a crocheted basket and I make it with, um, one strand of chunky and two different strands of DK weight. It's all acrylic yarn that I had left over from making things like uh, amigurumi projects in the past. And I saw quite a few months ago or sometime last year, Hannah, who is Hannah from Sheep's Alley, um, makes these type of bags holding many, many strands of uh, fingering weight or DK weight together to make baskets and I just thought it was such a good idea to use up yarn that either you've fallen out and out of love with or using up scraps or perhaps you're not going you know you're not going to use it for anything else so I've made quite a few of these and this yellow was actually a chunky yarn I bought to make a bear for my eldest daughter uh, last year um, or maybe the Christmas before last and I bought too much of it so I have quite a lot left over um, so this is the latest in the bags. And then I, what I did was I just um, used two strands of chunky for the top so that so that rather than having the mixed color, I just had a solid color at the top. And then I did the handles slightly longer than I would usually. And I've still got all this left of the chunky. So I might even get another little mini basket out of that if I add some more DK weight to it. And with one strand of chunky and two strands of DK, I used, a five millimeter hook. There you go. I don't know why I'm showing you. I'm sure you believe me. It's a five millimeter hook. So it's quite hard going because you use that's quite a small hook to use for quite a thick combination of yarn. Um, but that's why it gives it that structure to it. So it will stand up on its own and make it baskety rather than floppy. This is a present for somebody who loves yellow, well, mustard. Um, as much as I do. So I can now uh, pop a few little bits in there and get that in the post because I am trying really hard to get things made and in the post for people that I wish to gift things to. Um, so I have been working uh, very hard to cut out lots of fabric for lots and lots of dodgy bags to give us gifts and I've got a huge stack of cut fabric over there ready to be sewn together. Although I am having sewing machine issues because I've got a really good machine. It's a genome something and I've had it for about eight years and it, it's the, ten, the tension's wrong. It started to, you can see the um, bottom thread is showing too far through at the top and adjusting the tension hasn't worked and changing the needle hasn't worked and cleaning it hasn't worked. So I'm not sure. So I've gone and bought some really good high quality thread and I went and got some slightly different needles. Um, so I'm gonna try try that and see if it works. And if not, I might have to take it in for a bit of, I don't know, a bit of a checkup at the local sewing machine checkup place. And then I can get the dodgy bags sewn together. Where was I going with this? Anyway, that's the end of my finished objects. So now I'm going to talk about works in progress. I have got so many works in progress and I talked about a lot of them last time and I'm only going to talk about two of them today. Otherwise we'll be here all day. And I do have a bit of an issue at the moment. I've got too many things on the go and it's overwhelming me completely. I also have in my head all the whips that I want to be on the go because I desperately want to make things, but I can't start any of them until realistically I've cleared the decks of it. I've also got project bags upstairs with yarn ready for other projects that I want to make. It's, it's like an addiction, an obsession. I need to pull my finger out and finish some things. One of the problems is that I've got a problematic whip. Living in my very gorgeous Betsy Makes uh, lobster bag, 
And this was a gift from lovely, lovely Sam of Betsy Mates last year because I love lobsters. And this, I put my little lobster um, pin on there, which was a gift from um, my my lovely Instagram friend Kaylee, who is Shadows at Midnight Knits. So I've got a real lobster theme going on. So at least this cheers me up when I have to drag this project out. What I am making is for my daughter. I talked about this some time ago. It is a Cedar pattern, which I bought at Christine's Wool Shop in Bourneville last summer because they had a sample made up on a mannequin in the shop and my daughter who was um, 11 at the time absolutely loved it so we ordered the yarn and we got this Christine's wool shop in Bourneville by the way on Instagram are City Knits or City Knits 2 where was I oh yeah so I bought this and I got the yarn and the yarn that you use for this is Cedar Toscana DK is 100% cotton there it is and I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but it's a bit kind of sheeny, yeah? A bit slippery and a bit shiny. So far, I have made the first part of the panel. So you basically make this in four parts. Uh, the back and the front panel are the same. And then you make a lace panel that are also the same for, for, the, for the back and the front and then you sew the, the, the lace panels to the, the, the bottom panels and then you sew it all together which sounds simple but I'm having all manner of problems so this is my front section and then there'll be a whole lace section don't know if you can see this is my front section and then there'll be a lace section here at the top so let me show you the picture again so it forms that nice kind of ballet neck across the top You'll see. Now I had to sort of finagle uh, the needle size for this because I wasn't getting gauge. And it said that you need, so the pattern says you will need a pair of four millimeter needles and a pair of 3.25 millimeter needles. And then the tension is given for the four millimeter needles, which is the larger size, okay? In the pattern, you use a larger size of needle for the lace, not the stocking it but the gauge is using a larger needle in the stocking net, which is what you use the smaller needle for. So that baffles me slightly, but then most things about knitting baffle me anyway. Most things in life baffle me. So I'm just like, okay, whatever. So I got my gauge with, what needles did I get gauge with? So I got, I got my gauge with a larger size needle which was 4.5 or 4.75, I can't remember. And it meant that therefore my smaller needle had to go up to four millimeters. So what should have been 4.25 is now four millimeters and I'm knitting the main body on four millimeters. So now I have to do the lace section and I'm like, well, do I continue with the four millimeter needle or do I go up to the one I got gauge with on stocking. Do you see, even talking about it, my head is starting to hurt. So I think what I need to do is just grab some needles and make the lace and see if it fits or make it fit. Because otherwise this is just never going to get finished. And I've still got to do a whole other stockinette panel in yarn I don't particularly like knitting with or like very much, which is very disheartening, but it will be worth it because she really wants this and I think she'll wear it. And actually it creates a very nice fabric, although it might be a bit see-through. I, I might measure the gauge on this again and see if my gauge has changed because it was quite a while since I started this. I'm just now yabbering on. So that's my problematic whip. It's one of those projects where something's gone wrong, you can't get your head around it, and you can't make a decision about what to do. And you've already put in a fair amount of effort. So it's a bit difficult to go, oh, sod it, I'll just start again. Am I making any sense? Problematic whip. My next whip that I'm going to share with you today is living in my amazing hydrangea bag. And this was a bag that was made by Donna, 
who has the Inner Pickle Knitting podcast. And this is one of her very, very beautiful hydrange bags that she makes. And it is just, a, I just love this. I love all my bags, but this has got a little pocket on the inside and then it's got like a bit where you can keep your crochet hooks. Oh, I just love it so much. And it's really big. So this project relates to one of my incoming goodies. So I am going to show you the incoming goodies first that relate to this project and then it will all make sense. Ooh. Ah, cold tea. Blah. Right. So I had a surprise parcel arrive in the mail. It was one of those things where somebody arrives and you think, I didn't order anything, what's this? Uh, what could it possibly be? I don't remember ordering something. And I opened it up and even when I opened it up and found this, I still didn't understand where it was coming from. And then I opened the card and it was from lovely, lovely Sandra, who is Cherry Heart, who we were talking about when I was talking about my um, soul soothing mitts. And she has sent me one of her brilliant um, handmade bags and I don't know if you can see but it's got a oh there we go little with love tag on it it's got this beautiful top stitching which is something I would never be able to achieve this lovely fabric which we, we both realized when I posted it on Instagram goes beautifully with my wallpaper you see she thinks of everything she even makes me a bag that goes with my wallpaper and that lovely grey fabric for the drawstring casing and look the drawstrings are like fabric bias binding which I, is just so neat and lovely and then it's lined with this lovely striped fabric and inside it was absolutely bulging with minis wrapped up and what Sandra has done is she made me an advent calendar I said not advent, a June vent, <laughs> or she said there was enough to open one a day for a month. So I could save it till Christmas or open it right away. Now, my dad's funeral was on the 30th of May and I received this before that date and I knew straight away that I was gonna open it throughout June to bring me through this period of time after this awful six months and this awful start to the year and to bring me through the summer solstice and out through to the second half of the year in a more positive way, if that makes sense. So I started opening them on the 1st of June and it's been such a delight every morning um, the girls help me choose which one I'm going to open and then we write the day on the label that's with them that explains what the yarn is so we know what order we opened them in and they're going into the project I'm going to show you. So here is all of the yarns so far and Sandra put a little explanation for each yarn in with it. I'm not doing a very good job of showing you this am I? Let me see if I can get them all together so I can give, I mean every single little mini in this uh, bag is just divine as you can imagine. The work the, the, the things that Sandra makes are always made with the most beautiful colours and so beautiful. And Phoebe's favourite one by far was one that she opened this week and it was this one which Sandra says is called, um, it's a Kate Celine yarn in Rainbow Sherbet and she says she used it when she came up with her first socks pattern, Rainbow Sherbet this is called. Ah, I love it so much and Phoebe absolutely loves this one and it was good that she said she used it when she came up with her first sock pattern because I bought my sister Sandra's first sock pattern and my sister is now an obsessed sock knitter and she wasn't even a knitter before I gave her Sandra's first sock pattern which says a lot about how good that pattern was so thank you so much Sandra this is such an incredibly special thing to do for somebody and I know I've put together advent calendars uh, and it, it's a lot of work to put together all of that yarn and label it and wrap it and the care and the thought that's gone, gone into it and I, I just I wanted to make with the yarn something that I would just always treasure 
and that would be something that would be constantly in use. So in my lovely hydrangea bag, I am working on my second um, Lena Knits pattern. So last time I spoke about the Arbor Shawl by Lena Knits. And now, because I was so impressed with the Arbor Shawl, oops, just nearly knocked things blind, that I bought uh, the Memory Keepers Shawl. Uh, and the idea behind this shawl is it's a pattern to use up uh, scraps and minis and you hold them double with a neutral coloured yarn throughout so you get this kind of and forgive me if this isn't the right word mould is it mould when a colour mixes with another colour I might be wrong and you you so you hold it double at four ply with four ply so you choose a, a neutral four ply yarn and then you use your minis and then you use, to get gauge, I needed to get six millimetre needles. And I am now just about, I'm adding in my third colour of this. And here is where we are. It's so squidgy, so soft, so textured. So scrunched up actually, so it's quite hot. <laughs> So here we go. So I started up here with this, the colour that's got a lot of deep pink in it and then I went to a very neutral speckle colour and now I'm into a colour that has a lot of blue and purple speckles in it. And I'm mixing it with this one which is Drops Flora in light grey, which I already had. I might need to get an extra ball. In fact, I think I ordered an extra ball when I did a yarn order yesterday, just in case. So, and you can see that it's got this um, wonderful, I think this is seed stitch, I might be wrong, texture on one side and on the other side it stays um, stuck in it and then it switches per section. Am I doing a rubbish job of showing you this? And there's eyelet sections as well, but I'm not sure if you can see those. So, I really hope that... I'm not doing an absolutely shocking job of trying to show you this. And as you go along, you create an eye cord edge um, as you go. Although I'm finding, I, I mean, I've made, a, I realized last night that I made a small mistake on one side of the eye cord edge. See where that, see where it's kind of wrapped around. And I decided it wasn't going to be noticeable enough to let it bother me. But I find on one side, my eye cord edge is quite, poofy and long and on the other side it's like when I knit socks this is it's really neat and ordered I don't know why that is anyway either way I love it and it is going to be massive I don't know if there's any other pictures in the pattern to try and demonstrate to you how big it's almost like it's going to be a blanket shawl no there's no more pictures to kind of but it's all, all on the on the memory keepers shawl uh, ravelry page you see how big it is. I mean, it's a proper wrap around blanket shawl and it's gonna be so cozy and so warm. So I'm going to put all the minis that fit into this uh, in. And like I say, I'm on number uh, three and I'm using the Russian join every time I join a new yarn in. And that was a technique I learned when I did the ragdoll shawl by Hannah um, of Hannah from Sheep's Anne. I'm loving that project so much. Oh, and the scissors that I'm keeping in here are my um, Eiffel Tower scissors. <laughs> my daughter bought, my eldest daughter bought me these for my birthday. How cool are they? <laughs> so they're all living in there. So it's such a, a special gift and a very special project. Moving on to Incoming things. So there's a few incoming things that I have run out of time the last couple of episodes to share with you. The first is a gift that came from, I, now I haven't checked, I don't think, if I can mention your name. So I won't. So I'll say a lovely podcast viewer and then if, um, and I'll double check with you um, if I mention again. 
um, if I can say your name, but thank you very much to this lovely person, contacted me to say um, that they had something they wanted to send me. And they sent, they sent the most amazing parcel and it was wrapped. And I saved this paper so I could show you. In granny square wrapping paper. How cool is that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can save some of this and do something like frame it or something. Granny square wrapping paper. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And the, inside there was a huge um, uh, lobster shaped throw, <laughs> which the girls just went wild for. They just, they, 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 they couldn't believe it. So I haven't got that to show you because it's upstairs in Phoebe's room. But she also sent uh, some lobster earrings which I haven't tried on yet. I do have my ears pierced. I don't wear um, earrings very often, but I do have my ears pierced. She said, look at the lobster with their googly eyes. They're so funny. <laughs> and she also sent um, chocolate as well. And she sent some stickers and a lovely card. Right. And she also sent the most amazing yarn and the most amazing book. This is the book. Crochet Taxidermy. <laughs> now this is along a similar vein, but on a smaller scale to the Animal Heads uh, book by Vanessa Muncy. If you've watched my podcast before, you'll know that I uh, struggled for over a year to make a trophy crochet trophy fox head for my sister, which uh, I shared as a finished object uh, last time. This is on a bit of a smaller scale. And my favorite, <laughs> I'm reading a book at the moment called, um, I don't know who it's by, but it's called Other Minds. And it's a, it's a factual book about um, cephalopods, octopuses, and how they are the closest thing we have um, on this earth to aliens uh, because of the way their brains and their nervous systems are made up and the way that the way they uh, behave and how they got there so i'm a little bit octopus <laughs> or mollusk obsessed at the moment and there's a whole so this book is divided into sections so hang on let me read you out the sections so you've got like woodland creatures farm friends zoo buddies safari friends and under the sea creatures and they are all ridiculously adorable i mean look this is the <laughs> This is the cow. That is the, the little cow. And they're all just little. There's a rhinoceros. There's a there's a, a monumental moose. I will show you them. I've got to show you the monumental moose. There's the monumental moose. But the thing that just really tickled me greatly was in the under, undersea <laughs> creatures section and it is the uh, trophy uh, colossal squid. Now I'm going to have to make this for my bathroom. We, our bathroom is an, a total disaster zone and it needs um, refurbishing which we are hoping to do before Christmas but when it is done I've already got two uh, crocheted uh, op uh, jellyfish in there hanging up and they're made from cotton and they just survive everything they don't um they don't get dirty uh, and because they're cotton i think they don't they don't uh get moldy or anything they just stay pristine um in a bathroom which obviously gets quite wet and steamy there's also a, a tiny cute cuttlefish <laughs> and there's a very sleepy looking octopus as well but my favorite is the colossal squid. It says this big boy is straight out of a science fiction novel with his long tentacles and big bobbly eyes. He looks great crocheted in the most vibrant of colours. So I think I'm going to have to make a colossal squid for our bathroom. That's such a fantastic book. I've, I've, the girls have been through it as well and they absolutely love it. And she also sent the most amazing yarn, which is also kind of bathroom related. These, this is the colours that she sent me. These gorgeous blues. A kind of royal blue and a tealy blue and it is called it's by wendy and it's called washnit aaron for pots and pits 
So you can make it for making scrubbies for the dishes or you can make it, there's the little thing to show you, for making scrubbies for the human body. So both my girls have selected their favourite blue and I'm going to make them little washcloths and I think I'll have enough to make more than one. That is brilliant yarn, absolutely love that. And I think I'm just gonna make something plain with a raised heart shape. So I've been coming up with a grid with hearts on. I'll just do knits and pearls. But I don't know if I have to do something around the edges. I've never made up anything in knitting before to stop it curling. Do I need to just do a garter edge? Will that stop it like curling or will it not matter if it's washcloth? Answers on a postcard, please. So thank you very much, lovely, lovely person whose name I don't know if I can mention. <laughs> that was such a lovely, lovely, lovely gift and I have been so looking forward to sharing that with everyone, especially that book and those earrings. Where to put it? Let's pop it down there. Okay, another, another thing that I got a little while ago that I haven't had a chance to share box, was a total surprise. So... And I didn't know at first how it had arrived, you know, address wise, I hadn't given my address. And then, then I realised um, one of the prize winners from the Strictly Sokolon, who lives in Australia, um, obviously got my, uh, my return address that I put on the parcel when I sent out her prize. And she sent me the most incredible parcel of goodies from Australia. Um, so this is Hilary and I have checked with Hilary and she said it's okay to mention her. Um, she is Ruatha on uh, Ravelry and she was one of such, such a chatty, friendly presence in the group when we were doing the Strictly Sock Along, which we will be doing again this year everybody. So she sent me this amazing parcel. It was like receiving a little bit of Australia in Kent. And there's one thing in here that I actually didn't even take out of the parcel, like the package that it was in until just before this podcast, because I wanted to keep it nice. So she sent some stickers for the girls, which Phoebe just loves, absolutely loves. And she also sent some, oh, and they were all native Australian animals. And she sent some postcards of where she lives. And where she lives is Adelaide in Australia. So we've got some postcards about Adelaide and she sent me a little key ring. I've, sa I've saved this all in the box and I keep getting it out and doing that thing where I look at it and then I put it all back in. But now I'm so excited because now I've shared it, I can use all these things. So this is gonna go straight on my car keys because my car, my new car is blue. So this is gonna match, look, a little kangaroo with that beautiful kind of dotty, design on it. So that's my little key ring. She sent me uh, two packets of sort of furry friends Cadbury's chocolate from Australia with Australian animals on which of course I will let the girls have except for the one that I ate from this packet. I can't have that one. <laughs> And she sent me some other chocolate um, and some jelly babies and a lovely card and <gasps> gold dust from Australia. You can't get these here at all. Tim Tams. There's another, there was, past tense, another packet of these that were a sort of cherry flavour. They, yeah, they didn't last long at all. They are gone. And I don't know actually how we've saved these. This one is open. Uh, so that's the mint one, and this is the traditional one. Um, so now we, now that I've shared that, I can scoff those. I might have one of the mint ones with my Diet Coke after I film this podcast whilst I'm editing. I, um, I quite often have a Diet Coke. I do like it, a can. It has to be a can of Diet Coke. But if I have one, I only ever have one. I would never have more than one can of Diet Coke a day, but just occasionally... We have what my husband and I call a two Diet Coke day. And I've got a feeling that today might be a two Diet Coke day. That I can just sense it. There are some days where, you know, it's got to be all about the tea, or all about the coffee. You know those days? Well, today's a two Diet Coke day. Tangent slightly. She also sent me lots of lovely little bits and bobs. So she sent me this gorgeous little zipper puller, which I can use on a dodgy bag. 
she sent me, oh, I haven't taken this out of the packet either. Oh, I won't crinkle, but it's a little um, uh, UK Australian flags. Oh, can you even see? Oh, I think you get the idea. So that is going to go in my um, very quickly going, growing pin collection. Not that I've made my bag, that I, I want to make a denim bag to put my pins on. I haven't done it yet. And she sent me an Adelaide badge. So exciting. I love to have pins that I drop narrowly missing my teeth. I love to have pins from around the world because when I used to, when I did the pin collecting thing the first time around, I used to collect them um, when we went traveling with my dad. So my dad took us to all kinds of places in America and I picked up pins from um, Yosemite and uh, Palm Springs and LA and Universal Studios and all, all types of places and he would bring me some back. So to have an Adelaide one, I might do two bags. I might do one with my knitting related pins and one with um, world travel related pins because you can start to get them a bit more now. And then she sent me this brilliant little stitch markers and it says Mosley Park on them. So that's the little tag and there's the little stitch marker. Oh, how I love these stitch markers that have got those little um, sort of bendy metallic things. I, I really like those. They're so easy to, to work with when you're knitting. And I can't believe I'm still saying Anne. There's still so much more. She sent me, this is also Mosley Park. The most amazing yarn, of course it's yellow, and it says hand dyed sock uh, yarns, and, oh sorry, no hang on, <laughs> reading the wrong bit. So it says January 2018 sock cup, this is 50% alpaca, 25% silk, and 25% linen. It's 400 meters to 100 grams, and it's a four ply yarn, and it is super, super soft. Look at the color. I don't think there is a colourway. There's no colourway other than January 2018 sock club and the feel of it is like butter. It is like butter. So this is going to have to be, it's not going to be socks, let's face it. It has to go in something that's going to be near my face. Beautiful yarn. Oh, and that's the, that's the card of the yarn. Mosley Park and they are based in Puchera which must be in Australia so thank you so much Hilary for this then lastly and I'm, I'm saving this till last because to me this is just the most stunning thing she sent me a project bag and it is by no Noella Morton She's based in ben, Bendigo, Bendigo. I'm so sorry, I'm probably murdering the pronunciations. This is her card. She's D, I can't say it. That's the card. Diesel, diesel -y designs. Clearly, I'm, I've not got the power of pronunciation on my side today. And this is the bag that she sent me. I, oops. Yeah, I, I just, this design, it's got a little tag on it, which explains what it is. So it says, fabric designed in Australia by royalty paid Aboriginal artists. The bag is in design and sewn by D, Diesel Designs. And she's got an Etsy shop, which is um, Diesel, oh, I'll show you, I'll show you it in a minute. And uh, so this uh, fabric is by Marlene Doolan and it's called Bush Tucker After the Rain. And she's an Aboriginal artist. Marlene is based in Santa Teresa, which is about an hour out of Alice Springs. She depicts her traditional dreamings using a style which has been called Kering. I'm gonna have to show you that one as well. Um, it is characterised by bright colours and fine, intricate details. So, first of all, here are the details of the person that makes the bags with the name of the Etsy shop. And um, here is the details um, that I just read out with poor pronunciation. And here is the bag. 
I just cannot, cannot get over this bag. And I've had it in its cellophane wrapping until the moment I uh, sat down to record. It's absolutely stunning. I haven't even looked inside it because I haven't opened it. <laughs> it's yellow! <laughs> I mean, it's got a little pocket. Oh, and it's got a different design on the pocket. I don't know if I can show you. How gorgeous is that? This is so special and I feel very fortunate to, to, to have this. So thank you so much, Hilary, for that absolutely amazing parcel. And not only that, but it must have cost you a blooming fortune to send that lot from Australia. My goodness. I'm from Kent in the UK. A huge, huge thank you. Just going to put my watch back on. I wanted to share with you also the last two mini skiing clubs from Little French Meadow because I haven't um, had time to show you. So I've got May and June. Um, I'm a member of the uh, mini skiing, monthly mini skiing club um, by Little French Meadow and you, they open up sign ups for it every three months. So I've just signed up for the next lot because I just love this club. So they always come in these gorgeous little parcels and there's always a theme. So for May, it was called the Royal Baby and the two yarns were called It's a Boy and Toy Box and you always get a little treat that's usually edible so I never have that to show <laughs> and a little stitch marker so we've got Toy Box and It's a Boy beautiful beautiful yarns and the stitch marker of course this is all themed with Prince Louis in mind who was born in May is a little dummy Ah, so cute. And then the June one is called We Seek Him Here. And the mini skeins are called the Scarlet Pimpernel and the Foppish Dandy. And surprisingly, the edible treats are still in there. And I think I might give those to the girls after school. So here is the Scarlet Pimpernel and the Foppish Dandy. Oh, that red, that is just gorgeous. And the little um, stitch marker, Sometimes they're crochet progress keeper um, lobster claws and sometimes they're stitch marker, um, knitting stitch markers. Is a perfume bottle. So yeah, really, really happy as I always am with the uh, mini skiing clubs from Little French Meadow. I've also received a couple of other things in the post, but I am going to share those with you next week or the week after when I record again. Oh, one thing that I did receive yesterday that I bought. Um, that I wanted to show you. This is more enamel pins just to warn you because I'm obsessed. It is by lovely, lovely Caroline who has the Caroline Loves to Sew podcast here on YouTube and she is uh, Caroline Love to Sew on Instagram and her shop is Love to Sew UK on Etsy. I've got um, one of Caroline's amazing bags. She is a very, very talented um, sewer. And she's released her very own enamel pin, Sybil the Sheep. As soon as I saw this pop up on her Instagram, I had to go and get it immediately. So I'm very, very happy with that. So that's going to go in with my little collection of pins that have nowhere to be pinned to at the moment because I'm still trying to make a bag for myself to do it. Okay, so that's incoming giveaways so I drew all the winners last week and like I said I ran out of time so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read out who the winners were um, I did do it live which is probably why I ran out of time and had to cut it out so I think in future I will just do it like this before the podcast and read the winners out afterwards because it takes less time so I had three lovely, lovely patterns from very generous designers uh, who had all donated patterns as prizes and they all gave me a copy of these as well. So they are incredibly generous. And I just think that uh, to win a pattern is such, or to be gifted a pattern as well, is to is such a lovely thing because you can you can make us make it so many times over, and so much effort and and time goes into writing these patterns that when they when a designer donates one to be given away, I just think it's such a generous thing to do. And uh, the f so I had three that were donated. So the first one was the Bride by the Sea uh, shawl pattern, which was a pattern, a knitted pattern by Jen Sheelan. So there were 38 entries in all to that. 
And the winner was drawn as number 23. And her name is Sophie. And I didn't write down her Ravelry name, so I shall just go and look it up. So her name is Sophie. She's Sophie X U A N. I'll put it on the screen. In and she lives in Whitstable in Kent. And when I drew this, I couldn't believe it because Whitstable. I, my prompt for this was, "What's your? Where's your favourite place to be by the sea?" And she's put Whitstable, which is on the Kent coast, and that is one of my favourite places to be by the sea too. So I was really pleased to see that she'd won that. So uh, congratulations to Sophie, and I will let Jen Sheelan know, uh, and she will send you your pattern prize. The next one was the only way is up cow which is a lovely uh, cow pattern. We're using lots of different stitches by Naomi Buchanan, who is Cozy Cute Knits. And there were 35 entries for that one. And the winner was drawn as number 14. And that is uh, Sarah. Oh, this, yes, I remember. So this was Sarah. Um, and Sarah is Sarah, she's Bia and Row. No, she's B. what is she on? I can't remember what her rivalry name is, but she's Sarah One Daisy on Instagram and I know her well. In fact, I met her in March when I was on my way to Cornwall. Uh, so Sarah, congratulations. Uh, you were the winning uh, entry and you will win a copy of Naomi's lovely Only Way Is Up Cow. So I will get in touch with Naomi and get her to send you that. And the final one was um, the uh, Along Similar Line Socks, which was a, a pattern I test knit for Yola, who is one half of the Little French Meadow Dyers. And there were 39 entries for that one. And the winner was number 10. And her name is Bonnie. And her Ravelry name which I should have looked at before, is Fibre Chronicles. And the prompt for that one was, what, what is your favourite way to knit socks? And she said that she'd only made one pair of socks so far. So she doesn't have a favourite method yet. Uh, and then she's saying that she, was plan she plans to continue doing two at a time magic loop. Because if, if, uh, if she knits them one at a time, she's sure the second one will never get made. And I think we all know that feeling. So well done, Bonnie. Uh, that's a lovely pattern, and which I've already knit. So I will get in touch with Yola and she will get your pattern too. So thank you again to everybody who has donated prizes. Oh, and I should say as well, I received two lovely patterns from lovely viewers, um, which I, I will talk about them next time because I want to print them off and I'll show them to you. So we'll do that next time. So I think we've got time for a very quick additional um, and finally section, which is where I just talk about anything I like really. And I wanted to say, when I, I started doing January vlogs before my dad got sick, and one of the books that I was going to talk about in the January vlogs was this book, which is The Little Book of Luke, um, Luca, uh, which, is a, which is the Danish word uh, for happiness. And it's written by the same uh, person that wrote uh, the uh, little book of Higa, which I'll come to in a minute. And I was given this, I can't remember if it was for Christmas or, or something. And I read it, I didn't know what to expect with this book, but I read it cover to cover and I laughed so much. The, 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 the author, whose name I cannot pronounce at all, is, is so funny. And this is like testament to how much I enjoyed the advice in this book. These are all little tags marking things that I found um, helpful, relevant, or just plain funny or interesting. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. I had been given previously the little book of Higa and I hadn't read it because again, I hadn't really known what to expect. But now that I know that this one was so good, I'm going to start on this one. And one of the reasons I'm going to start on this book is because um, after my dad's funeral and we were getting back to normal, we decided we would book a summer holiday, which we hadn't done because we hadn't known if we could book a summer holiday because we didn't know if, if, how long my dad was going to be sick and we didn't want to go away um, if he was, you know, if, if we needed to be here for him. So now we, we have booked a summer holiday and instead of booking, normally we go to Cornwall um, in the southwest of England, which is about a six hour, five or six hour drive from here. Or we go to France where we, we just cross at the, uh, the Channel Tunnel and we drive down um, to the south of France, which again, once we're in France is about a six hour drive. So we pack everything in the car and off we go. And that is generally what we do for our holidays. Uh, but I have always had a long-term um, 
desire to visit Denmark. So that's where we're going. We're going to go to Denmark. We booked a house um, on the northern coast of Zealand, which is the island where Copenhagen is. We'll fly in uh, second to last week in August. And we are going to go for a week and we're going to spend time in Copenhagen. We're going to go to Devoli Gardens. We're going to spend time at the beach on the north Denmark coast. And we might even drive over to Sweden for a day because it's just across um, from where we're staying. Uh, so if anybody knows Denmark or has been before, particularly to the Copenhagen, Zealand, Northern Zealand region, um, I would be very interested to hear any tips you have. And in the meantime, I'm going to be reading the little book of Higa um, to get me in the mood. I'm also learning Danish. I've been learning Danish for about two years on Duolingo. Um, it's really hard, but I love it. So yeah, that's my little extra and finally bit. So thank you very much everybody for uh, joining me again. I feel like I haven't been, I feel like that this all was very quick and I probably just raced through things and it wasn't very interesting, but I always feel like that. <laughs> I hope you're all well and I will see you uh, probably not next week, but the week after when I'll have lots more to share with you and hopefully progress on my problematic whip. Take care and uh, enjoy lots of lovely knitting and crochet. See you soon. Bye.